Hi guys, it's Alex May WC. Today we've got another podcast. I'm with Paul Grayer from Grayer's Graphics. I've known you since 2018, maybe? Yeah, I'd say. We uh, yeah, both years. went to business coaching together and then, uh, well, we've used each other's services for the last two years, pretty much. Yeah. I think you... No, I had my van wrapped. You did, yeah. And then... Yeah, we met at Action Coach, that was didn't it. we? I had the van wrapped and then you you did a few bits of commercial wrapping down here and then obviously two the recent cars and, the, cars and, and the, uh, the Urban. So obviously, if uh, for the regular YouTube viewers, you would have seen Paul was the uh, chap who collected his Urban Defender. Yeah. That was right. Um, and he's here today to collect <clears> this <throat> absolute monster behind me, which is a, well, you describe it. What is it? Yeah, it's a bit of an animal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it is, uh, it's a bit of a beast. But, um, yeah, no, I just look, like looking around it, mate. You've done a really good job on it. Appreciate that. Really, so it's, really good job. It's a well, Challenger, he Challenger yeah. Hellcat? It's a Challenger Hellcat, yeah. S SRT, is that anything yes. to do with it? Nice. Yes. So how many... I didn't realise how many models actually do in the oh, really? Challenger. Yeah. I think they've got like about seven or eight different and models. And Hellcat the... No, you've got the Demon, <clears throat> which oh. is pretty sort of... Uh, someone did ask me, so I put that photo on Instagram and yeah. someone said, is that a demon? I didn't have a clue what a demon was, so I just agreed with him. So it's not oh, a demon. It's not it's a, a demon, a no. It's no demon in but that car. Is that uh, um, eight, so 800 brake, is it? It's 707, don't quote me on it, yeah. 707 brake, but That's it's nuts. fast. Yeah, yeah it's, rear wheel it's, drive. Yeah. Paul's got a perfect day to collect it because it's... Um, Nice and wet Kissing outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got two keys as well. Do you call it the valeting key? Yeah. You've with got... 500 horsepower. Obviously nice and uh, nice and low. And then yeah. the red key, which is 707. 707, yeah. Pretty so, impressive. So, yeah, I think they've said that um, people with a Hellcat, you should just drive it with a red key. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't drive it. You don't buy a Hellcat yeah, to, drive to drive it with a black key. A... But, yeah. Drive it for nice. the economy. But things you? like that, you don't know unless you look on like social media and YouTube and yeah, stuff. For sure. You don't realise mm -hmm. them sort of different extras you get with cars. But no, it's really, I've yeah. been really pleased with it. I literally picked it up last Friday. It and is um, beautiful. before that, I had a classic Mustang. That yeah, you that was cool, the gold one. Me. That gold was really Mustang. nice. So do they do those in right-hand drive? Or is it all? No, no, all no left they're all from drive. the States. Yeah, they're all from the States. And are they but, import or? Yeah. Oh, I think it got imported in late 2019 and what yeah. year is that it's 19, it is a 19, yeah. 19. So, yeah it is a big car as well we had a rolls royce dawn in here yesterday and i was saying that's like when that comes in every other car is dwarfed bar that just looked at it and it was a similar bloody size so so i i um, bit of kit. They actually come from a place in hampshire so i was mm. looking about for one um and i see that and it turned up and i never test drove it or anything i just, just literally nice. turned up and they part x the mustang as i said yep. so it was more of a sort of deal clincher for me to to do the deal does it fit and in the garage That's i haven't the tried yet oh, no i think the kids bikes might have to go <laughs> yeah 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 you know? Quite but, um no it turned up on the low loader and um i was just like jesus massive yeah and, uh, i see the video trouble getting in the gate i was oh, like really? oh no but um yeah and i was really surprised to be fair um because it looks quite a 70s sort of yeah. look they've kept it's it like very a modern but with the original touch mm. to it that's what i quite um, like about it as well like they've i like about dodge like a lot of the other mm. car companies they like to keep it they like to move with the times everything's, everything's like brand new ultra modern and yeah, changing sure. the shapes mm -hmm. and stuff whereas dodge have just said you know what we really like this sleeper look yeah um keep it all the same keep it all but inside it's really modern yeah um, it's it's really weird this is the second or third left-hand drive vehicle we've had in here and every single day I pull five, six cars in here that right hand drive mm. and I know exactly where the like you know, where where to look out for. Left hand drive, it takes some getting used to because you we pull in here and then reverse into this bay, which is what we did once. And obviously on a right hand drive vehicle, the like left hand side feels like it's quite far away. Yeah. Whereas in your car, I felt like I was on top of everything, but you're you're not. I had someone see me in, so it was a uh, yeah, yeah mate. I had cool, a, um, quite I've been cool quite group. used to left hand drives. I used to have a limousine company. Oh, we really? Had a, we had a left hand drive limousine, and uh, mm. that was um, eventful going out in that. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's, it's all right in left hand drive cars. The problem you get driving over here is like when you come up to a roundabout and a junction, yeah. you've got the roundabout there. And obviously, when you're sitting in the right hand side, you can yeah. see quite easily the car Everything. coming, mm -hmm. uh, that the car's coming. But when you're in a left hand drive, you literally got to guess. 
Just and see where things are. I know. normally stay sort of in the left hand lane and then when someone else goes, I normally toe. Yeah, do just you know go. what I mean? But quality. Um Well on that note as well, obviously, uh how did you where did you get into business? What did you start with? So did you ever work for anyone else or Yeah, I um so yeah, Grey's Graphics, mm -hmm. we're a um as you know, like a vehicle yeah. graphics company, but my actual background come from like exhibition graphics. So oh, really? I was, uh, yeah, I was in Ells Court um, and Olympia in the exhibition trade. Uh, 22, I got made mm -hmm. redundant. So I'm 37 now. And so I think I'm old oh, enough right. to be your dad actually, Alex. Oh, not, not what quite. are you at? I'm 20, 21. 21, yeah. so 21. yeah, I'm sure. Well, you, you never know, you yeah. never know. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I got made redundant mm -hmm. in 2004 and, um, <clears throat> it was like, you know, go and work for the rival graphics company up mm -hmm. in the exhibition industry or give it a go myself. And, you know, I didn't really have loads of outgoings yep. and stuff mm -hmm. to worry about at the time. So, um, yeah, story goes, I had um, my redundancy money I was supposed to get from them. I ended mm -hmm. up going up to the place where we all got made redundant. And um, I said to the guys there, they was there walking around with like clipboards. Uh, they was like auctioning the stuff off because oh, really? it had gone into liquidation, the company. Yeah. So I said, look, I said to the director at the time, I said, look, instead of giving me my redundancy check, how about I take some of the machinery and vinyl, you know? Ah, and the guy said yeah, to me, yeah. yeah, good luck, mate. I said, he said to me, I'll tell you what you can do. He said, um, wherever you can fit in a van yep. in the shop, then you can have for the check. Oh, really? So where we are in London was like Old Kent Road. I went and there was a place that rented out Luton vans. Oh, so like I the went biggest and, ones. Nice. I went and hired a yeah. Luton van within like a couple of hours, went nice. back and literally filled this stuff with about 10 grand's worth of equipment yeah. and stuff. And then drove back home, back to my mum and dad's house and said to me, mum, where the, where's all this going then? So that is set really it up cool. in my mum's dining room, mate. Oh, did you? 2004, yeah. And what did you start? And was that vehicle graphics then or still exhibitions? So... Yeah, no, I obviously being in uh, Furracking, like mm. Grey's Furrock, um, exhibition wasn't really yeah, the thing sure. there. So yeah, so I got into like vehicles, doing nice. the vans, um, helping a lot of small businesses really. Yeah. So doing a lot of like stationery and print sign banner work. Um, and then it just sort of went from there really, just really slowly mm. grew, took one member of staff on. Um, it was really, it's really hard, like at the start, you know, especially yeah. when you're only like 20, 21, 22. It's quite difficult because you're, yeah, you're sure. still quite young as well. This is the thing you're like, you don't actually know as much as you want to direct things, you don't actually know the answer to 80% mm. of the questions you get asked. No. You know what I mean? So you, it's not, not a case of winging it, it's more of a case of just kind of trying to educate yourself on the answers of Definitely, what yeah. those problems might be for someone else. Or, well, for me, it was like, I'd only ever worked for the company. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn business from like the start. Do you know what I mean? Like for, even down to things like chasing money, making invoices yeah. and running an actual business. I think, I don't think there's any, anything that like, if someone ever came to me and said like, what's the best, best step to start a business? I think the best tip is just like, give it a go yourself because mm. you learn so much. Like I remember doing, I could probably go on a course and learn how to do some basic invoicing and all this, but mm. It's the things you learn from, I remember being at home and like age 14 and I always had this mindset of I've got to be as professional as possible. Mm. Now at the time, not to my kind of knowledge, it was like a bit, I was going a bit too much for just the car wash. It was a car wash on the drive. Yeah. People were paying six quid, but I was like, how cool would it be to age 14 to give them an invoice? Didn't know what an invoice was. <laughs> so I'd do an invoice, then a receipt or whatever this was. And I would give it to them and they'd be like, all right, cheers. And and it's small little things that you're going on word, creating these things. You don't actually really know what you're doing. Mm. You're very much kind of winging it in some sections. And Why is uh, a 14-year-old giving me an invoice? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like, that's probably even got a bank account. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably not. Um, yeah. No, that's such a, I, I mean, obviously I know your story. Um, I remember from when, when like Mark and stuff was telling me. And yeah. That's just amazing to know that back then, even at that age, Quite cool, isn't it? I mean, 14, mate, I was jumping out of trees. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm honestly. still doing that as well. I'm still doing that. Yeah. But um, no, it's great to to know that you was um, you had that right from the start, yeah. that mindset that you wanted to do things properly. And yeah. mate, that's the only way that that we know, don't we, is, is to do stuff right, do stuff do it, properly. Do it and... to the best that you can physically do. And, mm. and that's, 
you know, 99.9% of the time, that's, that's the best you can do. So, um, but following on from what you were saying, so what was this age 20? So yeah, 22, I was 22 in 2004. Mm -hmm. Um, and as I say, yeah, the first few years, you know, like my mates are all going on holidays and they're all got well-paid jobs at that age. Mm. Um, you know, I'm still trying to scratch around and make a, make the same 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 as yourself yeah. mate i was just trying to do stuff properly and in the graphics industry you get a lot of people that are it's like a hobby to them doing graphics and even to this day now like we've been going 16 years um we employ 15 staff at the, at the yeah. shop now and even then and now it's very much the same there's a lot of people within the graphics industry that are sort of very laid back very unreliable yeah for sure it's almost mm -hmm. like a design sort of industry where people are sort of too laid back mm. so right from the start mate i just like <clears throat> really pushed the service yep Critical and made sure and for... people were um i think that is it's reliability really i yeah. think that is important because i was uh i was speaking to a bit off subject but i was speaking to a customer recently who's uh you do a lot of work with actually and he was saying like the industry you're in is actually powerful because there's not many you think like car wrapping wise, mm. there's some big names there which have done very well. But commercial stuff, there isn't really. No. Or I don't know if there's a big name where you're like, yeah, that's the commercial place. Not but really, now no. it is becoming like your grey is, I mean, it's very easy for me to call you and say, can you apply this final on the van? Mm. And, you know, you turn up, you've got a absolutely lovely unit now, especially... Um, Thanks, mate. A new place, and then obviously get it, get it all sorted, and it's looking nice and smart. Like, well, hopefully, ours looks now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's it. I mean, yeah, you're completely right. There's there was a massive gap in the market from where I come from. Exhibition, mm. there was no one doing the vans. I mean, just to give you the insight, like when I started doing my own business, people were still painting vans. Really, they were still hand painting the graphics on the vans. I didn't so, know that as a really? yeah. The industry is still really, really young. Um, so. In two, yeah, 2004, crazy. we yeah. used to plug the cartridges, the fonts into the stuff. Like you'd, you'd be blown away know. going back then yeah, yeah. Um, at, at Ells Court and Olympia. They used to paint all the banners, paint all the stuff. So when we come along mm. <clears throat> and started up, we was like the new kids on the block back then, you know. And um, yeah, it took us a few years to build up a good reputation. Yeah, for sure. Um, mm. First sort of five years, I employed like one or two staff. Mm -hmm um and then sort of 10 years in we had about four four staff but still keeping it very sort of close and was team. this uh was the original unit that i came to the first first was no that, no no, no i was or? um so i was at askew farm lane i was renting a place there uh and then we 2010 we bought the unit that unit that you yes, see the first yeah. unit that unit you see so we bought the uh, uh that was old. quite a cool um did you build that place no it was no, like it a um yeah it was like a derelicty sort of place right. and mm. we just refurbed it up pretty much like what you've done here refurbed yeah, it, really it up cool and stuff but we could only fit two vehicles two in there cars. so we was very much up until last year mm -hmm. we was quite um suffocated in the unit we was in so we could only fit even though we was doing like we had a good team to do the work we could only really do two vehicles at a time yeah. so and then so obviously through june march last year we took a big six thousand square foot unit on and that's really where we've I'd say, Grown. yeah, I was speaking to, um, I think it was Jack today about you. It seems like from an outside perspective, it's, it, you've been, I don't know, st I obviously haven't known you for that yeah. long, but steady. And then as soon as that new unit's come on. It just really unleashed. There's, there's what, yeah. five, six, seven cars being done a day. Long yeah, I think they've done, uh, they done nine vehicles today. Really? Yeah, in there. Um, so there's a team of 15 there now. And I think sometimes you've got to crazy. take a gamble and just... And just go for it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's always risks there. And obviously with risks being being there, what is the biggest, is there a biggest challenge that you remember going out through that? Or? Um, what, with a new unit? Just in general. Like obviously mm. there's going to, there's challenges. I mean, there's challenges every day in there really. Yeah. And problems, Having your own business is a big, big challenge every day, isn't it? But for sure. I think the biggest challenge I ever have being like a business owner is just being able to trust staff. I mm -hmm. think that's been my biggest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone through staff we've we've also still got some very start i mean very loyal staff yeah. that's been with me for sort of 10 12 years oh, now really? yeah so i've got um sonny's been with me for 10 years has he? gary's been with me for about seven years now yeah really? adrian's been there i think five um 
so yeah, there's it's, it's been some stuff, and mm. you know, it's with staff, you get ones that stay on the long run, and they're mm. there for the bigger picture. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, for sure, for sure. And it's nice to be able to grow and and show them what the bigger picture mm. is. Now they're you do sort a of, lot of management um, now. You do a lot of vision stuff with them as well, don't you? Like yeah. vision boards and dream boards for them as well, which is yeah. quite a nice little 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 touch. And yeah, I think as well. Like I know we're um, going to touch base on it, but when I started getting involved with where I met you from action coach, mm. um, having a business and, you know, we was both running businesses that in all honesty, we was just doing everything. So I'd be one minute, I'd be invoicing the next minute. I'd be running out, picking a vehicle up, dropping it back off, mm. helping design, then jumping it's, out, it's fitting. Like one, a lot of, not so much stress, but a lot of, it does create stress. There's a lot yeah. of things on, on, small shoulders if, if you want to call it that and i think that's when we've taken on staff members that have really really helped with that you notice when because it's become the norm now you notice when that person's away or mm, yeah um you know like i i think i've got a really really good team charlie jack ryan um and hopefully taking on a valitor as well this year you know good it's getting everyone on the same same board same picture and driving for the same results is really key yeah. and i'm critical like i know it but it's so it depends on the day you know like i, I do change quite a bit but i'm i'm pretty critical on you might have been doing a job for ages and then miss like not miss or i'm always kind of there to say have you done this have you done that yeah, so yeah. that's the bit that i'm a bit control and controlling but yeah i think you do have to be i think you've like got to for, so where it all changed for us a lot was putting in a system and a process mm -hmm. so that it's nice to have staff and grow staff, but unless they've literally got a structured process to their day, it is, it's hard, it's hard to, to inspect it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once we've done that, you've got to inspect what you expect. Yes. So if you expect them to do that, that and lock that up and clean mm -hmm. that up and sort that out by the end of the day, if it's not inspected, then yeah. it's not going to get done. No, exactly. And once we started doing that and um, a big thing that I'm sure we both do, uh, the default diaries through yeah. through the coaching yep. mm -hmm. thing and with the default diary, you know, the staff member knows exactly what they're doing throughout the day. Everything by that day, if they've done that, is all ticked and covered. It's just process, isn't it? Like we, we process. created processes that we still change weekly i'd say i probably mm. created this massive process thing a year ago or just just as we came into covid the mm. original lockdown when we weren't working of like structure of right the client they're a lead here when do they convert to like when are they getting converted mm. are we analyzing that data all these different bits that we're trying to kind of juggle and from that each time you can increase or improve the effic efficiency of that process mm. so for example when I was over the road where I used to uh, rent a unit like in a shared space and I was 16, 15, 16, 17, 18, I think. And someone would drop their car and that's it. You know, cheers, you know, cheers. I'll talk them through what we're going to do. And that's mm. that. So now it's, we've got an iPad, you've got a drop off form. We've got photos of the car signatures, you know, what else do you want? Everything's critical and professional. And that's, that's how I like to see it. But mm. I think I've noticed with your your company, which is what we've done as well, is until you do department things off where you've mm -hmm. got people doing just that and that and that, yep. when you do start growing, then you can start seeing where the weaknesses are. Yeah, so for, sure. for instance, for us, where we was having a lot of everyone doing a bit of everything, everyone's running around like headless chickens. Mm -hmm. You don't know where your weaknesses are. Nah. So if you've got like a weakness with fitters, instead of getting the designers down there to start fitting at 10 o'clock at night, you go, we need another fitter. So keep them up there. And, yes. that, and then that's when you do then start growing each department rather than just growing a business. That's the thing. Cause you I know? think the problem is at the moment we're, we're, the we're one man down in some areas, which is like our valet inside. Um, but we're, we then pull different people from different departments. Mm. So, you know, like Ryan, who's just come on as operations manager and detailing and all that kind of thing, will then get pulled to do valets or Jack, who's meant to be on the phone, mm. is then coming out here and doing bits and we're all, you know, getting a bit clustered. We're getting the jobs done and we're that's getting a sign of, done. That's a sign of growth though. Yeah. Like you're not gonna have a departments off and say, oh, we For can't sure do that valet right. because we ain't got no one to do it. Yeah, and it that, that's when you start realizing that, do you know what, if we get someone in, I'm quite a strong believer on apprentices. Like I've had mm. a lot of my staff have all started from an apprenticeship. We've just taken on two new apprenticeships. Oh, really? Actually, three actually. 
we actually um we applied the right way do you know what mm. i mean we put it all on linkedin we've done like a really good campaign about an apprenticeship scheme that we're doing and i had like six people in the room and honestly what i had in front of me i just took all six on they were so oh, yeah. good yeah they mm. were all like um 18 to 22 and they just really like was passionate about the business and stuff. And I wanted to take them all on. So there was yeah. only two positions, like a, mm -hmm. a design position and a rapping position. We ended up taking two rappers on because they were just, I just couldn't turn well, down the opportunity. that's a good thing, isn't it, really? That's, so, serious. that's really good growth. And I think, you know, having them on an apprenticeship wage for that first year mm -hmm. allows you to build up the work for them to then take them on. Yes. And um, our apprenticeship, apprentices do really well. Like, you know, they're on an apprenticeship money for a year. Once they've done that, they're getting paid on their ability, mm. you know? So That's they're on really good money. That's interesting way of looking at it because we're, like I said, we're looking... Um on taking on a valitor at the moment and that's like a critical role for us mm. because it's the person who, you know, you can't control what's not going on in the unit. Yeah. Um. So super process driven, really, you know, like systemization and, and checklists and all that kind of stuff. It just improves that and makes the job easier, which, course, is, yeah. which is what you want. So. I think as well, like, even though they are going to be cleaning cars and, mm. you know, emptying rubbish and doing that. It's all about that from the start. If they've got a process and a system right from the start, yeah. then You're when not... they're eventually then going to be detailing and putting ceramic mm -hmm. coats on cars, they know that, you can get to that. there's you, rules and yeah, regs about sure. what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that's the thing. I think when obviously the business has completely changed since I ever took, uh, say, Charlie on the first mm. person five years ago, that was, you know, just pop in and let's have a little play with the polishes kind of thing yeah um, whereas now it's a completely different process but i mean i'm blown away with your your accomplishments to be fair like in all honesty sure. how long have you been going well i started cl cleaning cars in the driveway in 2013 2013 so when was the business started i started you so i unit. called that chapo's valentin which right. was actually registered on the hmrc yeah. when i was age 13 because my dad was like oh shit what's he done like <laughs> you know this ain't good um chapos chapos valet and it was and in 2016 i moved across the road shared facility just had mm. one little bay in the corner and that was 2016 17 so look like, you're talking like a couple of years yeah. ago yeah you know and I mean? then 18 came in here obviously done quite a bit to this year yeah it was in very good condition that's, that's honestly with. mate you should be really proud and how many staff Appreciate are you that. working in uh well it's me and Two. me and three others four people yeah moment. so, so four of us. to give you an insight i was on my own for the first four years really? my business yeah i was working on my own just building mm. up the business on my own so from what you've come from four people already yeah, you're doing really good. well mate and you are obviously say you are still really young so young. no i'm um, young and you know what as well a lot of people in our industry the people that we know um when I put pictures of the uh, Defender on and even the Mustang and stuff, yes. people said, oh, the AWC, I've seen them. They're, they're, really? they're really good, yeah. And they all know you are as well. Mm. So you are making some good moves in this sort that of... That's um, exactly remember. what you want. I mean, there was... It's just the power of networking that we're, we're learning at the moment. Mm. You know, like Instagram and social media is great, but the amount of leads that come off Instagram compared to mm. someone like yourself posting you know like a great testimonial and then similar kind of people are going mm. you know i'll have mine done one of your mates i think with a yeah gt3 rs yeah commenting you know i think i might get mine done all this kind of thing because i find that people, of people, it? Yeah. people buy it off recommendation people way buy more off than, people yeah way definitely. more than anything else i think as well what i like about what you do is we've taken probably 16 years to get like a proper process and the stuff that we do, yeah. um, which is like the testimonial videos with um, Edan yes. from Landed Media. Shout out. He's sitting there Good over boy. there. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we've taken like quite a few years to build the business and, and, and to get them sort of things on board. Whereas what I like about you is you, you could quite easily have taken another couple of cars on and the customer service and dropped mm. the customer service, but yeah. you don't. You you want to do it that way and you won't change the way you are, which is For brilliant, sure. you know, it's brilliant. Like it's all, if the cars are there, it would be all great to take more on, but. Mm. Oh, you, get, you get a better service at AWC, honestly, than you do go into a Range Rover dealer to get your car, honestly. That's a powerful point. No, you do, Thank mate, you, you do, much, you do. And I think you that. just keep pushing what you're doing mm. because where you don't compromise on your standards, that is the right way to do it. It's the only For way sure. to do it. And Definitely. Um, that's where you get so much recommendation, do, um, don't you? Do you still do reveals of your yeah. maps with the 
because it's yeah. the small little touches that, mm. that also Just the cloth over it was similar to thing to what you don't yeah. do in it because i remember picking up the van there was like a little sneak shot on facebook and i was well excited that was a funny day wasn't it because i went yeah. down that uh I stayed the day. Didn't I dropped the off the van in the morning. Yeah. And I went to that pub. Oh, God, yeah, the <laughs> Oaks. Never... Yeah. I was in there on my laptop. Do you know how many people day. have been killed in that place? <laughs> and I'm sitting in the corner yeah. like... <laughs> but, yeah, it looked amazing. I'm surprised you got well. out there alive. Mate. Alive with one piece and with my laptop as well. <laughs> yeah. Funny, funny. Um, any big steps that you got coming or future plans for Grace big steps or? so um yeah i've got a few property bits as well so along nice. sort of the way mm. i've always sort of um used my businesses to um create investment to buy property and stuff so i do quite a few i've got quite a few hmo properties so mm. that's another thing that i sort of do On parallel the yep. to mm -hmm. the business so i've always used the business to make money to invest money yep um i do invest quite a bit of money still in my um in still in the business mm -hmm. um but yeah i've got a building i've just completed on friday actually oh, which really is nice. uh, it's got four offices and two shops so i'm gonna oh, sick. turn that into like another hmo and what is an hmo house of multiple occupancy ah, yeah, or okay. occupation one of them ones um so yeah, it's just yeah, people sweet. renting a room basically. Yeah. But I've always done it like quite hotel-y like, mm -hmm. you know, I haven't done it like a typical room Standard, share. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I've done that. So I've got that going on this year. Um, mm -hmm. And I think for me, I'm, I'm just trying to build the business so that I'm not so much relied upon in the business. So it's so important, but mm -hmm. I set a goal 19th of July this year to, I what I say is, basically the business can work without me mm. you know like what mark would say as such the business yeah. can work without me if i wasn't here so it just means that and it's certainly getting that way there's a few little bits we've got to improve on um and that'll be a massive achievement massive achievement at mm. say 22 or whatever yeah but the the main thing is <laughs> what i forgot what i was gonna say uh <laughs> that's the first time in any podcast i think i've just Flopped it. Oh, That's well. right. Um, where were we? We were talking about houses. Mm. <laughs> Carry on, you're fine. Uh, what is it? What was I talking about? What is, what's your, your thing you're going to do this year in business? Let's just roll from that. Yeah. Um, this year, we're going to take on a validator. So that's one thing. Yeah. Um, so big mile steps this year. Yeah, I think just... Getting... Do you think you could leave your business for three months and come back? What do you think would happen? Uh, that was the plan. Was that what you were going to say? That's, that's, <laughs> that would be the genuine plan. That's mm. kind of why I set that date. But um, Do you know what? I think... Um, not quite yet. I think with coming away completely from your business, it is quite difficult. Obviously, everyone wants a business that runs without them. Mm -hmm. The reason why I got involved with like um, the business coaching and stuff was to learn all them processes and learn them all so that almost like if you look at the McDonald's yeah, franchise, so like you want to be able to have, you want to be able to have a month off. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want any longer than a month off because I, I'm so passionate about what I do. Mm -hmm. I'd still be there and I'd probably just get in the way. So this is thing. I still want to be quite involved with my business, but I think it's good to get your business to a stage where it can make money mm -hmm. without you. Yeah, that's the tough thing. Like it, the, the problem is as well from the out, outside perspective, especially at my age, like everything looks, you know, like the unit and all the, the stuff looks mm. great, but it's, it is hard, yeah. especially this year, trying to make money. Um, mm. in this current climate as such but you do it like i don't want that to sound like poor sod kind of thing but yeah no but it, it is, is it's a big that's challenge the thing right, with businesses isn't it? and i think it's cool that once you get that um income in each month that's like consistent yeah to then put it into things like property or yeah that that's my be. biggest advice i'd say mm. is in all honesty my the properties that i've done over the last sort of 16 years they they do make me more money than the business yep. but it it's not so much that it allows me to keep the money in the business to yeah, invest in the business true. so it, it I, the live like my living and, mm -hmm. and what i do I, I do it with my property but the mm -hmm. business i allow to just plow money back in the business leave the business yep. there and it 
over, especially over the last like three, four years, it's really grown because I have mm. done that and we're not afraid to take on staff now. Yeah, and you know? invest in, in new people or new building, like I mm. said, because that's, you must have spent a fortune on the new place as well. Yeah, we spent, we got it like a shell. And to be mm. fair, when the landlord said to me what the rent's going to be, I was like, oh my God, what is... Yeah. But you break it down and you think, mm. you know, what do I need to do to be able to make that work? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I've, I've got, I know you, you're big believer in like living the living yeah. your goals and living your dreams and that and For i think sure. sometimes you've just got to look at where do you want to be what do you want and just be there yeah do you know just, what i'm saying like just do it is, there's is a guy the um james finelli i think his name is mm-hmm. he's like uh he talks he does podcasts and bits on on facebook and he was uh i'll nick this one from him but he was he was talking yesterday about a lot of people big um have their self so caught up on the past. Mm. You always think about regretting the past and you're always questioning yourself about the future, but you don't actually live for now. Yeah, like, for like sure. now, like right now we're sitting now. And I know it sounds cheesy, but when you do actually live for now and think about now, there's no stress. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing. All there is is like, if you just, even sometimes you think a, just a bit of silence yeah. when you're thinking, go for I think a walk said, and I saw one just live for like, now. Don't, uh, don't be a prisoner of your past or something like that. That was yeah. quite a good one. Not that, it's, it's more just the fact that, you know, like when as a business owner, you've got so much going on in your head. Responsibility. You, the calm is the best time, you know, like mm. in the evenings, I really, really like my evenings, um, especially in the summer. Like that's You're a lucky one that, there, mate. I'm literally... You, know, you got you got kids and all that yeah, stuff as well. Yeah, kids so and I'm, that. But do you not boy. ever think that obviously having your own business, sometimes you do feel that you do never actually relax? You're constantly yeah. thinking about the next day, the next You're day. You always, you are always. That's the only. Well, the, you know, there's loads of positives. There's loads of negatives mm. of everything. But the thing I, I've definitely improved on, but still got a lot to, lot to go. Is turning off. Yeah. Um, even when I'm on holiday, you know, like, I'm checking. I'm still. <laughs> I've yeah. got like I, I shouldn't have them but I've got like cameras on my phone so I'll just check them once a day you know mm. okay that car I oh know that car's still outside yeah. at half nine I shouldn't do it because my staff know exactly you know like they're great they've got their own heads and they've got their own vision mm. and they know what they're doing but I just I've got that you know not not controlling but I think it's because it, it's a good thing if I didn't have it then yeah we wouldn't be here but um I think you've got a you big just thing got, with trust you, as you well uh, did you go on holiday without the phone? Yes, mate. Yeah, nice. so impressive. Sixteen years, and it was only October last year that I'd done a two-week holiday in Antigua, and yeah. I literally I left my phone with Leon, like really? my, my, my GM at the shop. Yeah, and that was the first year. Literally, yeah, he came to my house the night before and went, like, "Give me your phone," and I was like, "Oh, oh God, yeah." And I literally gave him my phone. And I went, "Listen." anything at all just mm-hmm. ring joe's phone he went i'm not gonna ring up no no no. he said literally i've so. got joe's number like my wife yeah i've got joe's number if there's if your house is burning down yeah. or i really need to let you know about something i will but just going to and literally the first four days yep uh, was, i thought i was like an alcoholic without a beverage you know what i mean i was like oh my god what's going on what's going on? i couldn't check my cameras nope. i couldn't check anything and i kid you not after the, like the fifth sixth day mm-hmm. i actually just switched off and, and i was chilled. chilled i had the best holiday with my kids really? like, literally mm-hmm. by the end of it i was a lot closer to them I and do you know what it actually gives you a chance to evaluate why the hell we, well. i'd ever done this you i know, know. this is this, this is the problem and it's yeah, something i've got to work on a lot but I've, I've done it once on a weekend i went away with um my girlfriend and uh center parks or something and I left my phone at home Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it is the first, because it's, you know, everyone is addicted to their phones. Yeah. Like, you're like, where is it? You mm. feel a bit, but once you relax after that first day, you know, you're chill yeah. out and you're like actually enjoying everything else apart from. I think the biggest thing for me with my phone was I've got like 16 odd years of clients that just want to speak to me, just want to deal with me. And for me to now, then to try and turn around and say to him oh look there's Leon's number there's Leon's email yeah. um, can you deal with Leon mm-hmm. it came across at the first stage as being a bit rude and people are like oh who does he think he is like mm. now nah, I'm too he's too good but, for but at the end of the day I always think this as well um, and I do get back to as many people as I can but I'm I, sometimes I don't have the time if you like a quicker response will come from the landline yeah. or anything like that because exactly yeah because you've there. put the process in mm-hmm. 
Um, but for sure, some things I do like is, you know, like when you do get an old customer, I remember one, uh, Clifford, we used to do his car on the driveway. My dad used to drop me mm. off and I used to charge him 20 quid for a wash. And then a few hours later, my dad would pick me up, put all the stuff in the back of the car and <laughs> head back. And he came in the other day and we did his car and it was oh, quite yeah? cool because it's like yeah, seven years the journey later. Done, yeah. um, we don't still charge him 20 quid. That's you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, good though. It's good. Yeah, no, 100%. I understand what you mean. You've got to be able to put that in place for the customer mm -hmm. to then realize that that is the best route. Yeah, for, for me sure. to best help you, let me put you on yeah, to exactly. Leon or Who's you put you on to them. Often better at me. Or do you know what? Honestly, you, what do. If, if anyone is watching this podcast who is my customer, you get a better service when you go through the shop. You yeah. get a better service. All I'll do is go a week later. Oh God, shit. I yeah, forgot I, to get back I, to that person. I, like I, I didn't get him a price. And you think mm. once you've, once I've now done that, mm. I can, I can more, I can relax a little bit more and understand, know that they're getting a better service. Mm. Do you know what I like as well is I like when I come to work and I see a job there and it's completed and I've had no dealings Nothing with it at all. It. I don't even know the yeah. job or the customer and they come in and they go, Oh, you're right. It's Leon about. And he turns out this, I'm like, yeah, I'll just get him. The, yeah, yeah, this is the funny thing. I when, because obviously similar kind of thing, you know, like everyone always wanted me, you know, mm. even when, so when Jack started and the original plan was get Jack to be uh, like. Jack's very good, and he, by the way, yeah, yeah, he's really yeah, he's good. Um, all the team are really good, very, uh, very fortunate. And everyone's asking for you. And then suddenly I was coming back on the A13 and I was like, uh, funnily enough, after coaching, I said to Jack, I was like, do you want to do this collection, like first collection mm. or whatever it was? And it was a green BMW three series touring. I remember it. And I was coming down the A13 and this car went past me. And I was like, this is, I was like, holy shit. Like a car's just left me and I haven't, I've still done it, yeah. but I haven't done the collection. And now most people come in and they're like, I'm washing a car outside and a Jack's in there. I'm like, Jack in. And I'm like, yeah, it's really there. Yeah. It's, it's, it is a very weird feeling. So I know It's a good really feeling weird. though. It is yeah. a really good feeling. Um, and do you know what? We're both actually quite fortunate because we have both actually got really good teams and you are as good as your last employee, as they say. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, you deserve who you employ. Yeah. So if you don't look after your staff, if you don't do vision and dream boards for them and That's let them know that, that like, you know, yeah, yeah, we obviously through the coaching thing, we, mm -hmm. we're doing the dream boards yep. where you want to be in five years but I'm quite a strong believer that you know it's not just my business it's a collective's business so we've just sure. redone our like vision mission and culture and I'd done it um about two years ago with um Kent um yep. bless his heart um and when I'd done it there it was my vision mission and culture mm -hmm. do you know what I mean it was like what I All believed in and, and the staff never really sort of um believed it or worked from right. it so and that's exactly like you think about it like all you think you know why you know why sometimes someone sent me something it was like you are the business owner all right so mm. there is many things that you're still gonna have to do or whatever that might mm. be and i think sometimes the best thing is understanding that is for sure pretty powerful yeah um, but they just didn't really this was like two years ago they didn't really they didn't really get it and they didn't really understand why I was doing it. And then mm. I remember going into like a team meeting with them and I put a thousand pound down on the table and I went, right. I turned the board around. I went, if anyone can read our vision, mission and culture back to me, you can take yeah. that thousand pound. And as all looking at each other, like shit, shit. <laughs> and uh, none of them got it. And then literally I was just like, now nah, that board's just got to go in the bin. Yeah. And then it's only really this year that we done like a collective We've obviously took on like customer service people mm. now and more sales people and stuff. We've got a collective, got everyone in the boardroom and said, look, you know, where do you want to be? Where does the business want to be? Mm. What does it look like? What's the vision? What does it look like in five years, 10 years? We all built it together. Yeah, and now really we've done powerful, it. Really people powerful. do believe it. I mean, our vision is to create, to create wow moments mm -hmm. for our clients, but deliver them consistently. That's really nice. I don't get a thousand pounds for that, but... Uh, but yeah, we all come up with that. And let me try and read it back. Oh, and I'll get a thousand pounds. Yeah. And then, um, and they, they, yeah, no, the staff really do believe that. And mm. I think sometimes keeping it a bit more simple. Is all you want. And just, yeah, dedicated roles. And you see like, I always see Sonny and mm. Leon, in fact, posting on LinkedIn and that kind of thing, building their own stuff, which is really. Uh, it's building good audiences. I mean, both of our businesses are quite a visual business. Mm. You know, imagine if you sold like 
toilet roll or something. Do you know what I mean? You've got nothing to really post about. You've got nothing to get in, like, everything's different. Excite isn't it? people cars, about. Like, oh, sick! You got this new. Yeah. Especially now you're doing. You can do big stuff. Like, can you do Arctic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the reason why we moved in the unit Which we're is, in. So HGV is really where we're pushing our. Mm. Um, special. We want to be specialists in that. Um, and is that for cabs or the rear, yeah rear everything yeah as well? cabs we're doing um, Essex bulk tankers we do a lot of the tankers oh, really? as well wow. so we can fit about three of them in at a time the big tankers out. yeah and I think sometimes it's good to like pivot the business to mm -hmm. think you know what none of our other competitors in our area can get one of these big Arctic cabs just, in. yeah it's just doing so, something that's um, I mean there's plenty of work out there for everyone but it's just doing something that small bit better than mm. Well, as long as you think that, then mm. what is there else to do, really, if you know what I mean? So, yeah. How nice. did you, um, question for you, like, how did you feel you, like, pivoted the business through COVID and stuff? Um, yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, I think it hit us all pretty quickly. Yeah. Especially last year. I mean, we're all really used to it now. But I think when I was, I've said it many a time, I was on a walking weekend, funnily enough, with my dad and a few of his mates and some younger people as well. And, uh, this COVID thing started coming about and it was a bit more serious. And then suddenly you get yeah. back and then on the Sunday or the Tuesday, whenever I got back, it was like, we're going into a lockdown two weeks, you know, it was 23rd serious of March, then. Yeah. Like, so I came down here, I was like, right, straight away, let's do a video. Um, we did a video, I think it was 10 o'clock at night, just to say we're closing the business for two weeks. Didn't know if that was the right decision I or not. I think I see that one. Yeah. And uh, from then on, just try, just try to pivot things that, we clearly couldn't make any sales for mm. detailing. So it was like, right, how can we increase cash flow? Because we're going to, you know, we're a growing business. We haven't got loads of cash. So cash is going to go quick mm. on bills and all the other monthly expenses. So how can we bring in small amounts to increase that? So we did loads of product stuff. Um, I just got, I, I can't say I enjoy doing it too much, but I just got out of the comfort zone as much as I could. So I was just on camera, you know, like selfie videos. I don't really like doing that kind of yeah. thing at the moment. Um, You've definitely um, perfected that though. I've, like your videos have gone to a different yeah, level now, haven't they? I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, just getting up there. So we were doing orders. We we did zero orders a day for a long time. And then we just, not nothing, I don't know, small numbers, but 10, 10 wheel brushes or whatever they were a day. Yeah. And it's small things that you're like, right, okay, we've got something to cover that, this, that and that. And it was looking at the bigger picture on what we can do now the amount of people that were messaging and saying, you know, like this is the end of the world. Yeah. It's the end of the world for, for us too, but mm. just a bit of mindset stuff. It was such a good time to just like have some calm and peace as well. Yeah. Like no, I actually got to work early, like six thirty in the morning every day I was doing morning routine and my lifestyle then was actually very different to how it is now. Cause you know, we've got back into a routine of working, you know, you're mm. working later or, so I think it was actually quite a powerful time for me as developing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty glad we did all that because otherwise we'd, well, you never know, would we be here? I'm not sure. I think you'd definitely be here, mate. We, yeah. we would be here. Definitely. But. We've done similar, really. We pivoted our business. Um, I think when we got told on the <clears throat> 23rd, similar yeah. thing, it was a lot of the staff were living with elderly people and course, um, yeah. we had we had a decision to make. It was like, right, what do you do? Do you carry on or do you, you know, pull the plug for yeah. the time being? So we decided to have a month off, but different for us. Like we literally signed the lease to this 6,000 square foot unit with no interior yeah. layout or fit out, signed a lease on the 1st of March. And it was like, right, I've just gone and invested all this money and now I've got to close scary, the business. Isn't it? Very so scary. moved the computers to home, obviously had the kids at mm -hmm. home. Everyone was working from home. Um, and then we just sort of thought we need to pivot the business. So we need mm. to do something. So we got into like all the Perspex screens. We started producing them, bought, uh, COVID screens and stuff. Yeah, I bought the stickers, stickers. didn't I, from the floor. We've done like a PDF. I've done it on literally, it's probably like the 1st of April. I had like mm. a PDF for all of the COVID stickers that you needed to that think about. Well, these? Yeah. Okay. Please ensure the you COVID use hand sensor. Stuff. And to stuff. be fair, we our April was the best April we'd ever had. That's so good, isn't it? Uh, so we, we gained another um, probably 60-odd clients in London. Uh, we've done all, most of Canary Wharf. We fitted out really? with all graphics and stickers, uh, different floors and stuff. And yeah, it was just thinking on our feet. And mm. then we thought, do you know what? When It was a great time for us because it was where we was all started to work from home. Yeah. 
I started to use the staff for their benefits. So that I was like getting them to really think about stuff. Instead of like every day, it's like crazy, busy no, and manic. Everything's and happening at the same there's time. There's never enough yeah. hours in a day. We got to a point where it was like, I can actually have a Zoom call with my staff and like, you know, It'd on a Friday a afternoon, you know, like we'd a have relaxed, a beer. Yeah, and, a relaxed atmosphere. And it's it was really, want. really good ideas coming from the staff. Mm -hmm. um, we'd done a new like menu system for yeah. the van. So you used to come in and get a van graphic from us and it'd be like, what do you want? And we used to design it from scratch, whereas we started doing our own menus. I've seen that. I think you've seen um, that. Yeah, like one to 20 on the different vans. So when someone says, I want a van doing, we send them 20 so options. So that they can make the option. It's and it's got the price on there. It's quite transparent. Mm -hmm. And do you know what? I know COVID's obviously been real shit for a lot yeah. of people. Mm -hmm. um, but for actually for business, it it slowed everything down yeah. for a good month mm -hmm. to say, do you know what? Reevaluate everything. Why are you doing it? And then we just made it easy to sell to people. And that's what you're um, right. Pivot, pivoting is really, really important. And especially if you're in a, a shitty time like that, you've just got to do something. Mm. Um, like if you hadn't done that, you wouldn't have had the best April. You'd have a yeah. really slow April, wouldn't you? Really, yeah. If you're not doing any cars. Well, we probably and, would have given the keys back and not mm. bothered doing it. I mean, there's, there's diff obviously different people out there. And I'll For say sure. that about the staff as well. You know, we was getting quite a bit of negativity and it was like, oh God, what's going to go on? Are we mm. still going to have a job? And it's like, look, you know, we ain't going yeah. nowhere. This mm -hmm. is going to be stronger than everything. Let's just That's what figure out do. how like, we got to sell it. The kind of leadership as much as you can. And, you know, like no, no one, even the most intelligent person in the world would have known that that was going to happen or the answer Especially for that long as well. Questions. Like mm. well, we're a year in and we're fingers crossed getting out of it, you know, yeah. maybe soon. Um, but yeah, pivoting, really, really important. Adapting and changing and, and trying something new. And it was, you think yeah. how much things have changed as well, like Bonk, isn't it? especially with like the Deliveroo's and the Uber Eats and yeah. stuff. Um, even the transport. I mean, a lot of our work is the transport industry, so we do like the HGV graphics and stuff. They're right like, ordering like thirty, forty lorries. See these companies, like they, I've tripled in size. Oh a lot of transport. You look at things like Amazon and DPD yeah, and yeah. stuff like. They've That's all people are doing. quadrupled yeah. their business. Um, obviously, it's sad for a few business in events and yeah. You know. that's, I think that's a bit of a tough one because, as much as I say, like adapt and change and all that, there is a few industries there where you do. I certainly feel for some people mm. where there very much is not many options. Mm. Like a lot of them have been doing a lot of takeaway events. stuff, though, haven't mm. they? Yeah, you know? that's true. A lot of takeaway stuff, and I think really. And a lot of people have got to just get behind things like that, you know, like events sure. and festivals and stuff like that. It's really good time to say, look, if you want this festival to be happening next year, you've really yeah. got to support it this year. Yeah, exactly. And, and try and, uh, and I think the government's been good business. for yeah. for businesses. Yeah, I mean, definitely. especially I'm, for our businesses. You know, like I'm, I'm certainly not a Facebook warrior. You do see a lot of people mm. giving all the, you know, like negative comments. I'm not going to put my personal politician head on and, and look into all that, but. I think it's the same thing. The government haven't ever gone through this as well. So mm. give everyone a bit of time to yeah. sort, sort it out. And like all these grants and all these different things, yeah, the majority of them you can't claim or whatever they might be, but at least there's an option there. Yeah. Because if it wasn't It could have been a lot worse, you could You could give away, you know, you could give a business crazy amount of money and they still be doing something wrong. But, mm. you know. I think you're right. Like these people that are in, obviously in parliament to do this mm -hmm. some people aren't going to agree with what they've done and stuff but you know these guys are on like 70 odd grand a year yeah. getting absolutely abused Battered on telly on. and stuff yeah, and i exactly. think how would anyone else do it any different whatever decision they're going to make mm. some people are going to always going to be this is the thing. there's always mm. going to be two sides to every decision story how mm. you want to call it but yeah, I've got, um, obviously, the other business I've got, a school wear shop, yes, um, uniform-wise, yeah, which obviously my wife runs um, with Carly and stuff. And um, that's been quite a strange business, but that's just moved a lot more online. Mm. That had to close, obviously, non-essential shop, that closed. school uniform, has that been slower or because people so have been in school? Or? It was a bit crazy, really, because we had the lockdown and then everyone went back to school in September. So we still had a seasonal yes. school uniforms, are seasonal. Course. So mm. they only really hit People in. buy them at the start and then it's just top ups. Or whatever. That's it, mate. Yeah. yeah. So we had an, or we had a, a normal sort of season. Um, mm. and then they've been closed since November, but 
it's allowed us to get the website redoing yeah, a few little bits that you can just top so up same, ready for next year yeah same kind of spare time if you want mm. to call it that to work on the business and instead of in it because otherwise things can be busy on mm. that's a big uh big thing that we both believe isn't it working working on the business and not in, in it. yeah. it's very tough because i am um, i like at the start of the year i had two weeks where i stayed at home and i wasn't here and the I multiplied many things and made a lot of things greater and improved the processes and did a lot of marketing or whatever that might be mm. because I didn't need to be here. Like everyone had everything covered here, which was great. And it just shows that it can work mm. without me to an extent. Um, and then when I'm here, if I'm upstairs, you know, like that classroom, I can see I'm on my laptop. Ah, oh, just go downstairs and just, you know, yeah, like, yeah wipe that or just help just check that or it do something. yeah and and then you're down there for 10 minutes and 15 then you are oh, wash it I'll, and that's my problem so mm. i just gotta stay in my box um, not literally just <laughs> my actual uh, sometimes of, it might be good to actually have like a day a week where you don't maybe i works really well at home really yeah. really well like yeah I, just I work a, a day done. at home on the mm. business isn't it you know and um sure. yeah I've, i um I can't remember when it was Christmas time. I took my computer home hmm. um, through the through the closure. We we just closed down for like ten days over Christmas. You do that, didn't you? Most yeah, yeah. Just do you know what? There's only real time is like Christmas through the summer. We're busy, busy, busy. There's only a real time through Christmas for ten days. Hmm. We just shut down and go. Do you know what? Everyone's just gonna have ten days Take off. Some time off. Two weeks relax. really off. Mm -hmm. Relax. So I took my computer home because obviously I wanted to just update, my, and then. January, I know Paul Flavin, who's my coach at the minute. Um, Paul said, leave your computer at home. Just leave it at home. Mm. I thought, well, that's a bit of an ask, yeah, that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But yep. do you know what? It's still at home. Really? We're at March now. And I just go into work and I have an hour with that staff member, yep. an hour with that staff member. An hour. Otherwise, I was going in, just scrolling, just, refreshing my emails. and Just to do things, for sure. Yeah. This is and it's I great do. because, you know, I go home. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get home for like three o'clock now and I'll then check my emails at home. And So um, basically all you're doing is just getting home at three and then coming down here to collect a new car. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess so, really man. Good. Well, I think we'll probably wrap it up there anyway. Yeah, because, thanks, mate. That's been probably about 45 minutes, my estimate. Um, but I think that was really interesting listening to your story and bouncing some ideas and talking about some different stuff. And I'm sure it'd be good to maybe do like a unit tour video or something. Yeah, like cool. That yeah. Anything you want to do, That'd come really down cool. and bring uh, Mr. Edan. Mr. Edan. And uh, yeah, bring the cameras down, man. Come and show, I'll do show some, you what's going on down there. Do some bloopers. Yes. You're good at those. Yes, we have a few bloopers. <laughs> no, epic. No, it was really good. So my name is Alex from AWC. This is Paul from Grey's Graphics. And thanks for listening to our podcast.